at the WVU Coliseum in Morgantown. You can see the final introduction just being made for the starting lineup for the West Virginia Mountaineers. First, the starting lineup for the visiting Mississippi Valley State Delta Devils. Vaisha Vaughn, Isaac Williams, Rashawn Searles, Michael Matlock, and Terrence Trailer. The starters, they are coached by Andre Payne, came through the NAIA ranks at Wiley College, now in his third year as the head coach at Mississippi Valley State. And for the Mountaineers, their starting lineup, Javon Carter, Tariq Phillip, Nathan Adrian, Issa Ahmad, and Elijah Macon. Daxter Miles Jr., normally a starter at that guard position, is out with an illness. Tariq Phillip steps in his place for head coach Bob Huggins in his 10th season at his alma mater, one of the winningest coaches in NCAA history. And getting set, as you can see, his non-conference record for tonight's game against the Delta Devils. Doug Sermons, Byron Jarrett, and Chance Moore, the officials for tonight's game, ready to go. And the Mountaineers looking to improve to 2-0 and improve on a couple of the things that Bob Huggins didn't like from that first matchup. This is just the second time the two teams have met. The BVU won 99-71 back in 1993. West Virginia in the home white, the Delta Devils in the green. Well, I'm sure Hud's uh, made it uh, a just a pointer that the defense wasn't good. If you don't play it, you're going to be out early. So we'll see what happened over the last two days of practice. Three regulars not on the trip for Andre Payne's team, hoping to get them back when they return from this four-game road trip to begin their season. Javon Carter and the Mountaineers controlling the tap and a 2-3 zone for Mississippi Valley State. Issa Ahmad short. The rebound is pulled down by Michael Matlock. Mississippi Valley State will play a lot of different defenses. Started out in the 2-3 zone. Oh, trouble now. The turnover, Phillip, and he'll take it right to the basket. West Virginia in the press, even after a miss. Phillip with the steal and the finish. Three-pointer on the way, and it is good. So, wasn't sure if it was going to be a two or three, but Isaac Williams, very good three-point shooter, knocks it down. Well, West Virginia, Bob Huggins has been emphasizing, you know, transition defense, picking up people once teams break the press. Into Elijah Macon, lost the handle, but lost the handle because he was fouled. He'll go to the free throw line. On his whistle to number 21, Terrence Trailer, his first, team's first. Interesting not to Elijah see Macon Marcus Romaine, their leading scorer team. in the starting lineup today. Well, yes, leading scorer and leading rebounder from last year, not in the uh, starting lineup tonight. Making a 46% free throw shooter a year ago. And hits the first. Checking in Quick for substitution. Searles out. Here. And the very impressive Dariel Riley, the freshman, uh, has checked into the game. 11 points first ball game against Northwestern. Coach was very impressed with his play. And hits them both. This will give him a chance to set up the pressure. They brought Riley in there to try to help beat the press. And that ball is turned over. Beja Vaughn could not control. And again, we've talked about this so many times. Teams come in here, they work on it in practice. So hard to replicate the intensity and speed with which they're attacked by West Virginia. No, they just don't have the personnel to do that. Then, try not to panic, but when the length West Virginia has, it's tough to get that ball in and up. The Delta Devils staying in the 2-3 zone. This is Ahmad, right down the lane, and he is going to be called for a charge. So Vaughn steps in front and draws the personal foul call. Well, when you drive down the middle against the zone, those guys on that back line back there have a chance to slide over and get pretty good position. Well, a lot of contact before the charge was called. Inbounded to Vaughn, and Vaughn will have it stolen by Carter, but it goes right to Williams, who will try another three-pointer, this one in and out. And good hustling rebound. That's Terrence Trailer who came up with the board. Here's Riley with a spin move and the floater. And that is what Coach Andre Payne wants to see Derry O'Reilly doing. Stop, pull up, knock down that floater, does it there. Look pretty poised for a freshman. Really likes him, said he'd be a 
mid-major player, higher player. You see Adrian convert for a, uh, not a shorter young man, and uh, Adrian forcing the turnover. Marcus Romain. Amos Given will check in. Boy, really good ball movement here. Issa Ahmad, quick look to Adrian. Adrian, no it's coming in for the easy layup. Ahmad, such a good passer out of that five spot. Here's Macon leaning in. Well, West Virginia should have a field day inside. And this is Marcus Romain, their leading scorer, who's checked into the game. And a quick hand by Carter, kept alive, and a timeout called by West Virginia and Carter is still down. Macon gets up, but they're going to come over and see what's going on with Javon Carter. It's helped to his feet. And then hobbling over a little bit over towards the West Virginia huddle after that timeout. Boy, good. How about Carter and then Macon diving on the floor after the loose ball. And again, oh, you can see him just roll that left angle. Ooh. And we just talked about it too, Big. Look, you, you think you've beaten the pressure. You think you can slow down. You could never slow down against West Virginia. They want to speed you up, make you uncomfortable. And Carter there, I'm sure Romain thought he was in the clear, but Carter had other ideas. Sure. Well, Carter known as one of the better defenders in the league, in the Big 12. Uh, he's been honored with that. You, if you have the ball anywhere around him and you put it on the floor, you better watch out. So Carter is in that is a good sign sometimes just the initial tweak it's not as bad as you think get up and it, it kind of leaves two three zones still now the perimeter to Phillip they're in that two three zone you have to wonder whether or not they'll get out of it much with West Virginia and their size but Really, I don't know what they can do with West Virginia's size. Well, they're able to get it inside there and score. Romain gets it across the timeline. Riley trap. Another turnover. Phillip right down the lane. Beautiful oh, move. A shot. Wow. Andre Payne has seen enough. He wants to stop it. 8 0 West Virginia run has put him up 12 to 5. Boy, Tariq Phillip on this shot. I mean, I'll tell you what, that's the kind of the old playground shots that you throw up, you know? Good body control. One thing about Tariq Phillip, he can take a lot of contact, but he's still strong enough to be able to get the ball up on the board. Another thing, too, you get this 2 3 zone, try to pack it in and Help your inside guys, but so far West Virginia has been able to get the ball inside against Mississippi Valley State as we head over to Robbie and Spikowski. Well, Robin Warren, you look at Nate Adrian. He led West Virginia on opening night on Friday with his 13 points, and that might be a theme for him this season. And talking to some people around the team, they said, hey, this guy has a chance to be our best player. And I asked him about what kind of leadership role he wants to assume with the team this season. He said he wants to be able to lead by example. He said and he's going to do that first and foremost by showing more focus and concentration in this game. Now, he said he's been doing that by showing up a couple hours earlier than when he needs to be. And guess what? He saw a few more guys there today, and he hopes it continues the rest of the way, guys. Six turnover, Robbie. Thanks very much to West inside. Just another West. easy turnover for West Virginia. And a seventh turnover. Well, you call a timeout if you're Andre Payne, and the first thing you do is turn it over two times after the timeout. Brendan Watkins also in the lineup now for the Mountaineers. Watkins has checked in. And this is Watkins with the ball. Tried to go to West. Carter pulls up. Come on, Carter. And they do get it into Riley. Takes it to the basket, swallowed up, back to West Virginia. Yeah, once they break the pressure, they really need to be somewhat under control. With Carter, the pull-up three-pointer. Well, if he tweaked his ankle at all, it's not affecting his <laughs> shooting right now. There's Williams, three-point shooter, too strong. Rebound to Adrian. Williams, another guy Andre Payne really likes, but... Uh, 
going against a much taller team than he's used to facing, and he knows that. Andre Payne said, look, this is a, he's not used to having six, seven, six, eight guys in his face when he's pulling a three-pointer. Kept alive by Romain. Still being battled for. And here's Williams. A little contact. No call. Williams keeps it alive again. And now it's stolen away by Phillip. And the lob to Adrian. Adrian. 21 to 5. Wow. The Delta Devils right now are just really helter skelter at both ends. A 19 0 run for the Mountaineers. They lead 21 to 5. We'd like to welcome Hardy Telecommunications viewers in the Lost Area River, uh, Lost River area of West Virginia. I beg your pardon. Thanks for watching and rooting on your Mountaineers. All of us at Root Sports and WVU appreciate your support. Really cool part of the state. Lost River. 12-2. Points off turnovers. Mississippi Valley State has a three-minute drought. And the pull-up and the basket ends a 17-0 run. Amos Gibbon gets the bounce and to a 17-0 West Virginia run. That has put him out handily 21-7. We'll give that to Brandon Watkins. Off the mark. Rebound to Matlock. Batted out of bounds. It will remain Delta Devils basketball as Beetle Bolden has checked in. Machi Magic Bender. Bob Huggins getting a lot of players, a lot of time early. Riley being guarded by Bolden. You have that luxury when you get a, a lead like they have. Watkins' presence may have altered that shot. Is Tavon Myers. And Issa Ahmad off the mark. Bender with a rebound. Now Myers quickly like might have wanted to set up for the three. <laughs> Let him a little bit there. Good patience here for West Virginia. Ooh, Myers has it rejected by Romain. Nice block by Marcus Romain. A couple you know, guys Romain's from Brooklyn player. going at it there. <laughs> Bolden will try from three, and he will hit at the top of the key. Nice screen by Watkins out there with the clock running down. West Virginia didn't panic, got a good shot. Searles to Matlock, able to keep it alive. And Matlock fouled by Bender on the reach in. Follows whistle on Magic Bender, his first, team second. Mm. Yep, a lot of body contact there. He got the ball, but when you make contact with the body, they're going to call it. Two shots. I think Machi's pretty much been Deserted for Magic. Magic <laughs> yes. Bender. Matlock gets the first. Checking in for the Mountaineers. Shot just 42% from a year ago. Sagaba Kanate, another nickname Sags. He has been dubbed. Yes, labeled with affectionately now. So. Matlock hits them both. And some pressure by. Mississippi Valley State here. West Virginia easily breaks it. Myers for three, and he hits. No hesitation at all. We're talking about the confidence that this young man has now, and you can see it just by that shot. Well, you see that second year in the program. Ahmad looks more confident. Myers looks more confident. Up ahead to Bender. And Bender ooh, doesn't get the roll, but will get a chance to go to the free throw line as the block is called on Matlock. 22, Michael Matlock called for the first, his first, second team foul. Well, I'll tell you Andrew what, the, uh, the, the player tried to take a charge right there. Could have gone either way, but Bender gets the call. Yeah. 
Magic Bender from Warsaw, Poland, played with the Polish national team over the summer. To Mountain Mission School. They really like his upside as he hits the second. Again, a six foot ten guy on the point of a press. I just can't imagine trying being five ten trying to get that ball in. I think eventually he's going to be a very good shooter. Yes, he is. You can see the form. He's just you know struggling early on here. There's Romaine for three and the foul. So Marcus Romaine three leading scorer and a first team all SWAC Follow preseason the selection. Bender, Chance for a four point play. Bender's coming out, probably wants to go to the other end of the bench away from Coach Huggins right now. Hit the foul line, one shot. Huggs didn't say anything to him. I think he realized he knows he made a mistake there. Mm -hmm. Romaine misses the free throw. The Delta Devils do like to press, but again, we mentioned those three players not with them on the trip and that is affecting their ability to play that way. Yeah, the, the, the amount of defenses that they want to change. Side jump hook, Kanate, no good rebound to Matlock. Ooh, nice combative rebound by Michael Matlock. Romaine pushing. Lost the handle, but out of bounds off West Virginia. Carter, Chase Harler, Elijah, Elijah Bacon, Bacon will check Chase back in. Harler. Chase Harler, the freshman from Moundsville, West Virginia, went to Withing Central High School. Checking in for Mississippi so Valley. So West Virginia players sprinkled throughout this lineup, beginning with Nathan Adrian, but exactly right. others as well. And you see uh, Sags and Macon on the floor together. You haven't seen that combination of the big guys playing together. Matlock trying to go to work. Kicks it out, Romaine, three-pointer, no good. Rebound to Adrian. Well, one of the things about getting some of these non-conference opponents, it does give Bob Huggins a chance to try different combinations, exactly. see how they work in a game setting. You know, sometimes, you know, you go back to the old Twin Tower days of Patrick Ewing and Bill Cartwright for the next, people wonder, Team well, how, how come that wouldn't work? It didn't work particularly well in New York, by the way. But, you know, you, you never know what combination is going to no. work, right, until you give it a shot sometimes. Well, short of foul trouble, I'm sure in the Big 12, you're going to see West Virginia with some uh, times when they have to have two big guys on the court. Up ahead, Carter's able to change the shot, but following it up is Rashawn Searles. Well, you can see Mississippi Valley State likes to run when they get that opportunity. The big thing that they have to do is make sure they secure the ball first before they take off on the break. And we have a whistle and a foul away from the ball. And foul is going to be on Amos foul Gibbon. Number 42, Amos Gibbon is first. Team foul number four. Fourth team foul on the Delta Devils. Staying in that 2-3 zone versus the out of bounds as well. Say make him shoot it here. Coach and uh, they had him drive it and they're going to draw another charge twice now. We've seen one of the big guys put the ball on the floor for West Virginia and had one of the Delta Devils draw a charge. So Bob Huggins some teaching moments. His Mountaineers up 28-14, 11-48 remaining in the first half. Macon right now really needs to have confidence in taking a shot. You've got Adrian down low, you got Sags down low, 6'8 and 6'9. They're giving Macon that shot out there. He's trying to draw the group so that he can pass the ball inside. But those guys, those big guys, have to have confidence and shoot that ball from the free throw line. Mississippi Valley State inbounding. We've gotten a little bit better at this as the game has worn on. They had seven early turnovers, just one in the last few minutes. There's another. Ahead to Javon Carter. Carter will leave for Kanate. Nice read by Carter. I think Carter could have put the shot up, but he saw the big man coming down the court wide open. Ten different Mountaineers have scored. As they lead 30 to 14. Romaine for three. Short. Rebound Adrian. Good recognition by Harlan. Did not force anything. And 
Nathan Adrian for three. Nate Adrian. You can just see the confidence boiling over out of Nate. Romain draws contact. He will have a chance to shoot a couple free throws. Nice read by Carter. You're not. If you grab his arms, he's going to take you to the rim with him. Number one, Marcus Romain at the line for the Delta Devils. Romain will go to the free throw line. 76% free throw shooter a year ago. Average 18.6 points per game. And gets the roll. Canate now with two, or uh, Macon now with two fouls off the checkout. Checking in for the Delta Devils for 33, Jamal Watson. West comes in. Jamal Watson checking in for Mississippi Valley State. Second free throw for Romain. Romain didn't start. He's their leading scorer and leading rebound from last year. He didn't start, but you did see the team settle down once he was in the ball game. Mississippi Valley State with a little full court. Running uh, jump pressure. Again, really not a problem for West Virginia. A nice pass down oh, the What? You talk about authority now. Step back three for Williams, no good. Canate tried to follow, but he and Nathan Adrian got a little mixed up there. Batted away. Phillip with another steal. Adrian will try for three. And Canate, I beg your pardon, West will be called for the personal foul. Boy, what a vicious dunk. Uh, that is big time. Elevates and just goes up. I just can't imagine another year, well, by the end of this year, and you can see it now. Granted, not playing against the people he's going to see in the Big 12, but still. Five second violation. Now, a big, strong, physical presence, but not just a, not a guy who stays uh, earthbound. He's got a little no. spring. His biggest deal would be being able to, to temper emotions and not get in foul trouble early. And, Tariq Phillip under 10 minutes remaining inside to Brandon Watkins. But Watkins, good patience, gets his bone back. Too strong. And out of bounds off Nathan Adrian. Fifteen, Hassan Bugs. Hassan Bugs. Back into the game for Amos Given. West Virginia stand now with full court. Man pressure and they're switching. You just don't know where the trap's going to come from oh, with West boy. Virginia. Now Searles turns it over and then the foul by Bugs as West had a clear lane to the basket. So long, you telegraph those passes. And again, if Carter's anywhere in the neighborhood, he's going to get a hand on that ball. West hits the first. Boy, what an impressive offseason West had. And then in camp, observers around the team really raving about the work Lamont West did. They think he can really be an X Factor this oh, year. Oh, I think, yeah. He's long and, you know, really athletic. And his the big thing is he has worked tirelessly on his shot this summer. I mean, he really worked on his shot. A real trouble getting the ball in bounds. And now off they go. And here's Romain. Basket by Romain. Phillip stopped the jam, almost came up with a steal, but Phillip, nice body control. Romain, nice body control in the finish there. Phillip, long three pointer is wow. good. Really deep. Main. And they're going to call West on the personal foul. That will be his second. And we saw a lot of those same type of fouls oh, called last ball, last ball game. That's his second. 
They're not calling them with the regularity now that they did the other day. Now, of course, West Virginia's talked about that too. You stick a hand out or whatever, they're going to call it on you. Seventh personal foul, one and one for Marcus Romain. It's the first. Brandon Watkins checks for the ball here. <laughs> Romain and Carter having a little moment at the free throw line as West goes to the bench with two personals. <laughs> and Carter, a little gentle reminder that he's there. Pressing now off the zone. Watkins to Ahmad. Nathan Adrian, but he is fouled as he goes up. West Virginia really unselfish with the basketball. We've seen a number of touch passes. Guys have really worked hard against that. Isamar drawing the uh, double team and finding Nathan Adrian. Good sharp passes. That foul line area is going to be open against that zone because they're collapsing down so far to try to stop everybody inside. You can get that free throw line shot anytime you want it. Eight points now for Nathan Adrian. Five rebounds, so off to a very good start in this game. Talked about him and his strong performance in game one. It's in both. Nine points now for Adrian. And Ahmad, we talked about him last year. Just such a good all-court player. Yes. The ability to pass for a big man. Get to the corner, three-pointer. Nope, rebound. And remain battling. It comes to Phillip. There's Jamal Watson in there as well. Kick to the corner. Carter, three, no good. Rebound him on. Right up, has it blocked. And pulled away now by Watson. Watson. Mississippi Valley State doing a pretty good job of contesting shots here late right inside. Wow, Riley right down the middle and jump ball as Phillip. What quick hands. <laughs> I thought for sure that was going to be a foul that call, but man, oh man. Nope, it looked like a lot of ball. I don't know. Yeah, I thought he got him in the face, but I think he got him in the ball. Right. Ooh. <laughs> Almost ran out of real estate there. Didn't well, he dribbled through the entire team, and now he's got to go back and go the 90 plus feet again. Riley trying to go, trying to go to work on Ahmad. Six on the shot clock. Ooh, difficult shot. Didn't hit the rim, and it's going to be a shot clock, shot clock violation. violation. Well, West Virginia continuing to pull away, 42 to 19. They've created turnovers. They've been able to take it to the basket, and they're taking it to the Mississippi Valley State Delta Devils. Played only Watkins and Chase Harler looking to get on the score sheet. So a lot of balanced scoring for the Mountaineers. Canate with the impressive jam, and it's been a good show for the West Virginia fans thus far against Mississippi Valley State. You know, we've yet to see uh, Dax Miles, and then when he's uh, when he's healthy and ready to come back again, you will. But having Tariq Phillips on the floor, that's just like having another starter. I mean, Ahmad with a three, no good. Boy, it looked good though, didn't it? Yes, it did. Expanding that range a little bit. Nice. Rebound attempt inside by Romaine. And still alive, a nice job in the behind the back by Adrian. Here come the Mountaineers down the middle. You know what? I, I don't know that I could get in front of him and take a charge. Well, he's going to branch in the basket and then, and then dunk it. Third dunk for Kanate in the game. Phillip called for the person to foul his first. One more look at this Kanate jam. He runs the floor well. And again, once he starts up like that, you are not going to stop him. The Class A 
Player of the Year, including Kennedy LA Catholic, State, Hermitage PA to the state championship at the Class A level. Riley a one and one. And he'll hit the first. Now, just the big thing here is just the physical size and strength that West Virginia has over Mississippi Valley State. I mean, it's, it's quite evident as you watch the ball game. And we'll see if depth plays a part later. Again, three regulars for Andre Payne not on the trip. Vermont oh, tried the lob. One to Kanate for the fourth dunk, and that. Uh, that uh, that well, earn uh, Amada yeah. seat on the bench. Lamont West checks in for the ball. I can see why you'd be the way the, the, the sags flies. I can see why you'd be tempted to try that. Yep. Here's Riley being chased by James Long, who's checked in. Remain in big trouble. Remain just bounced off of sags just now. I'll try the alley oop again. Adrian goes to Carter, but that's denied. It will remain West Virginia basketball. Let's give it go. West three pointer, no good. Adrian another rebound. Spins, lost the handle. Again, you know, kept the ball alive. Did not try to force up anything. Long. Mm. On target, another chance and another three pointer on the way. Another miss for the Mountaineers who've gone cold. And Lamont West will pick up his third Lamont personal over foul. Over the back. His third. Team foul number nine. Watkins and Lamont check back in. So Canate will head to the bench, as will Lamont West with those three personal fouls. Again, Bob Huggins talking to West. Two of the three fouls weren't necessary. We, if you're going to be on the floor for us and help us out, we cannot have those type of fouls. That time over the back. Matt Locke. That was, was in front uh, of the one one I'm sorry. The, the defensive uh, player had good possession on West. Sometimes you're better off just letting them have it. Adrian spins to long. Here's Ahmad. Boy, Nate Adrian kept it alive, and Ahmad has it back into Watkins. Beautiful Brandon feed by Ahmad. Nate Adrian around the basketball. It's almost like a magnet. He's, the, he's there all the time. And Riley's going to be called for a push off. A little frustration there. Having trouble getting the ball inbounded. Gerald Riley is first. Team called well, Ahmad with a nice pass. Tell you what. He has such good peripheral vision. They just, you know, and touch pass. We've seen two or three of those out of him. Adrian, by the way, nine points and eight rebounds already. On his way to a double double here this evening. He'll try the three. No, well, he's got one half of it done. Twelve points for Nathan Adrian. Watkins and. Contact on the other end. Isaac Williams went flying. Brandon and Williams will head to the free throw line. Still five minutes to go in the first half. West Virginia's turned Mississippi Valley State over 15 times. Isaac Williams shooting a pair. And quite honestly, Rob, it seems like it's been more than it that. It does seem like it's been <laughs> even more, doesn't it? Williams a 79% free throw shooter a year ago. Out the lineup for the Mountaineers. It's the Magic first. Bender. Magic Bender in for Nate Adrian. Well, Magic Bender and Lamont West are the heir apparent to that point on the press down there. So uh, they've got a good mentor there in Nathan Adrian as to how to play that. The Delta Devils showing a little bit of pressure here. 2-2-1 two, two, look. Again, West Virginia, no problem with that pressure. Man-to-man -man defense now. And Long tracks down the air and pass. He'll try the three-pointer. No good. 
Watkins battling for it. Still a battle. And Vacia Vaughn will call a timeout for Mississippi Valley timeout. State. So uh, both Valley teams State. hustling. Andre Payne has to certainly be happy with his team's compete level in those loose ball situations at least. You get their players on the floor like that, and you see them scrapping after that basketball. You know, at the end of the game, timeouts are going to make, aren't going to make a lot of difference to Mississippi Valley State. I wouldn't think so. No, it's not like I, it's, I don't think it's going to come down to a, a last possession where they need a timeout. For over the last four minutes and 59 seconds, almost five minutes, 15 turnovers, zero field goals for Mississippi Valley State, which is playing the first 14 games of the season on the road. I hope they have more than one away uniform. Those green ones be a little stale, a little stale after those 14 games. But you know, they're, they're playing good people just like St. Mary's. If you get into the big dance, having that experience does help. By the way, just one timeout left for Mississippi Valley State. And we have 431 left in the first half. West Virginia not guarding the out of bounds. Watkins playing center field. The other four players for West Virginia in man. Well, they break that easily. But Watkins is there to erase things on the other and end that, as he blocks Williams. That's his job. Prote uh, uh, protect the rim. Boy, that is a nice option to have in the back end of that pressure. Bender will try from three and he hits. Well, we've seen a couple of fair balls out of Bender. That'll do a lot for him as well. First three pointer of his career. Bradley trying to go to work. We'll find Williams. He'll have to reset here. Here's Matlock. Tough shot. Block called on James Long as we hit a timeout with 3.54 remaining in the first half. West Virginia up by 29 points. Talk about Kanate at 11 in his debut. He has three jams here tonight. The Mountaineers up big over Mississippi that evening. Don't miss any of the excitement. Friday starting at 11 on Root Sports. Aliquippa and Beaver Falls at 11. West Allegheny's Bob Palco looks for a record eight championship, taking on McKeesport, Thomas Jefferson, and Newcastle. Central Catholic and Seneca Valley will wrap things up. Matlock hits the first. Michael Matlock, the 6'6 senior from Memphis. Can't wait for those WPI championships. Oh, wow. Really, really good football. And it'll be a lot of talent out there. Boy, Central Catholic loaded. They take on a Cinderella Seneca Valley team. Incredible finish in the McKeesport Gateway game last week. A Hail Mary and lateral on the final play, giving the Tigers the trip to Heinz Field to take on unbeaten West Allegheny. Thomas Jefferson also unbeaten. Seven on the shot clock. Come on. Oh, one second on the shot. Oh, a little hesitation, too. Didn't panic, didn't force it up hard and quick. A little bit of an issue here. It was a shot clock. Shot clock was down to 23. They reset it to 28 seconds. Well, you know, if I'm Mississippi Valley State, I've got the ball inbounds. I don't think I want to have to inbound <laughs> yeah, it again. <laughs> and over and back. Yep. Sometimes when you have, even as a guard, when you have pressure like that and it's coming from all angles, you kind of forget where you are on the floor. It is, uh, it's tough, and they do not have a field goal in the last six minutes and 24 seconds. They haven't been able to hit some free throws, but tough sledding. They knew it was going to be a little down in personnel, a little up in class, uh, certainly. We're talking about the 19th ranked team in the country. Myers is checked back in. Other than a little man-to-man. -man. Oh, nice, nice drop pass. down. For Bender as Kanate yeah. on the other side of a jam, the assist side. Well, sags to avoiding the. Uh... Oh! Knew that was going to happen. He avoided the charge and then a big block at the other end. That was Romain who challenged him. 
Canate, another rebound and another follow up. Boy, he has been impressive. It's really not fair. And, and another one. And this time a personal foul is going to be whistled. But, but when you have Canate and you have Watkins on the back end of that break, it really gives you a chance to stop somebody at the rim, doesn't it? Well, yeah, and we saw him making with some big blocks first game as well. The thing is that that's so good is the timing and the ability to avoid the contact with the lower body. Now, people wondered how he would adjust, came over from Mali in Africa a couple of years ago. Played at the smallest classification in the state of Pennsylvania in Class A. Big step up in talent, obviously, when you move to the NCAA ranks. And uh, the story is just being, it's, it's not, it hasn't been told. They're just starting to tell it. But as we see Beto Bolden check in, uh, Kanate so far has looked right at home. Thank you. Yes, well, and he's a freshman. But you know what? By the time they get to Big 12 play, he won't be sneaking up on anybody. They will know about him. Some pressure from the Delta Devils. Myers thought about it. Take it in. Ooh, tough shot, and he is helped out with a foul call as we go over to Robbie and Zbikowski. Robbie. Well, guys, we got the halftime report coming up in two minutes, 11 seconds of game time, and athletic director Shane Lyons will join me. We'll talk about the renovations here at the WVU Coliseum and also at the football stadium, and also talk about some of the excitement generating some buzz within the WVU athletic program. So stay tuned for that. The halftime report, Rob and Warren. Robbie, thanks very much. You look around. There are a lot of teams ranked. A couple of them, I don't want to steal all Robbie Sutter, a couple of them are ranked number one in the country. Yes. I don't want to get in front of Robbie's stories, but <laughs> uh, stay tuned for that because, you know, you, you talk about the men's team and the women's team being ranked. There's other sports doing great things here. That's in exactly Virginia. right. Football team with Dana Holgerson, obviously. Another big win as they beat Texas this weekend. I think we just automatically pencil in the rifle team from year to yes. year to yep. year. Another steal. Bolden will drive it in. Vito Bolden. Well, Robbie, great job to keep that alive. Myers comes right out at defense. He's the fastest player on the team, evidently. And, uh, Defense really, really has improved. You got to play defense to play for Bob Huggins. Yes, you do. Here's Romain. He'll leave it, but again, stepping in, another charge call here. Good job by Beetle Bolden. He read that the whole time and slipped in, got great position, held the position, got the charge. 18 turnovers. checks in for the Mountaineers, checking in for Mississippi Valley State. Chase Harler checks back in. Two-time player of the year. Wheeling Central High School. You really can't see any uh, you know, effects from that uh, from that knee injury beetle bowling head. You know, it takes a while to get back from those things, but he looks like he's a, you don't see any type of, you know. Favoring the knee or anything. No, jumping is good or maybe even better than he ever has. Inside to Bender. Bender. Now that appears like it's there all day for West yes, Virginia. It it's a huge size discrepancy. Searles. Floater. Ooh, nice shot by John Searles. Well, he had to get that over to the 6'10", too. Magic Bender trying to contest the shot. Searles gets that ball up high. Drops it in. Canate lost the handle to Matt Lock. And the pull up, well off the mark. Right, given. Well, I think if they you. want, they can hold for one here. <laughs> well, they may do that to set to run. And Bob Huggins is calling out something that he wants. Long into Tavon Myers. Bolden, three pointer. Too strong. Rebound. And that will do it for the first half. And West Virginia up 64 to 28 over Mississippi Valley State. 
Great balance from the Mountaineers able to do what they want defensively as well against Mississippi Valley State as we head over to Robbie and Spikowski with coach Bob Huggins. Yeah Bob turnovers 18 to 3 in favor of the Mountaineers. What changed from last game to this with your team not being so generous and giving up the ball. Our intensity level. I mean I thought we played with good intensity. The whole thing comes down to some ball pressure. If you got ball pressure, it's hard to look around and find people. When you have a commanding lead like you do right now, if it stays this way, what can your team gain in the second half tonight? I'm worried about us getting better. We got to keep doing what we're doing, and we got to do it with the same kind of enthusiasm, same kind of energy. Thanks, Bob. Yep. All right, Rob. Robbie, thanks very much. The Mountaineers leading by the score of 64 to 28 over Mississippi Valley State. The Delta Devils have run into a buzzsaw here with the 19th ranked Mountaineers. Coming up, Robbie and Spikowski will rejoin us. The halftime show coming up on Root Sports. They had the outside shot and then see some vicious dunks by uh, Sags. Again, Mountaineers doing whatever they want. We take a look at the first half stats, and look, the rebounds, we expected that. Those two bottom columns, I think, are the ones Bob Huggins is going to be most happy with. Turnovers and points after turnovers. And look at the field goal percentage, 49%. When you're shooting, it's hard to get cold shooting layups, you know, and that's uh -huh. what they've had. There's a lot of layups here. So, and that's a direct result of those turnovers. And the Mountaineers enjoying this comfortable lead. And we heard Robbie and Mikowski ask the question of Bob Huggins, what are you trying to do here in the second half? What are you trying to do here in the second half? Well, I know Huggs. It maintained intensity. If he thinks there's an eyelash not going as hard as they should, he's going to pull them out and get the attention. So, and I think those guys know it. If they don't, they will know it very quickly. Continue to play team ball. They're, you know, he, Bob doesn't want to see stat stuffers here, you know, guys. They can get anything they want anytime, but still do it within the team concept. West Virginia basketball. Andre Payne looking half. on. Knew this would be a difficult trip again without three players, but also obviously moving up to take on a top 20 team on the road. I would have loved to have heard his halftime speech. I don't know is it what you end up saying. Boy, on a switch. Yeah, look at the mismatch inside. Mod fouled as he goes to the basket. That's uh, Vesha Vaughn with the foul. For a little while there, had Riley on Riley, naked. Yes. That was a total mismatch. They couldn't find him or didn't see him. But uh, that would have been probably the easiest basket making would have ever been able to make had they found him. And Ahmad hits the first. Four points, three rebounds, two assists for Ahmad in that first half. And we talked about that last year, just sort of the all-around game. Bob Huggins looking on at Ahmad. Hopefully those numbers will go up as he gets more comfortable, but the ability to add something in every stat column as we see a quick turnover, TJ Trailer, Terrence Trailer stepping out of bounds. That's the third or fourth time uh, they've uh, stepped out of bounds on that sideline, and that's that good pressure forcing them to the sideline. West Virginia continuing that pressure. Bob Huggins is going to keep doing that. Mississippi Valley State playing man to man, but they are switching everything. That's how Darrell Raleigh got uh, switched off on Macon there a, a while ago. There are teams, Second personal foul, by the way. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, there are a lot of teams you switch, but you know you switch the three, four, and the five, but you can't have a point guard switch on a, a person the size of Macon. And this 22 the, in the shot clock. Really, the first man-to-man -man that West Virginia had seen for Macon, Adrian. Just sees and knows everything about the players that he's with. Really picked apart that man-to-man -man defense and now some contact. Used to say that a player had to have some room to come down with the ball. Andre Payne really upset about the no call. Mod shot no good. Adrian with the rebound. I believe that's going to be a double-double for Nathan Adrian. 
Check the statistics. No, he's uh, one rebound away at 12 and 8 at the half. Zero. Bishop on 12 and 9 now for Nathan. Just Nathan. such good court awareness. Look at that read. He saw Carter's man with his back to him and Carter making a good play. Adrian led him like a quarterback, leads a receiver right to the basket. When you talk about staff, uh, stuffing the stat sheet, 12 points, nine rebounds, three assists, two steals for Nathan Adrian's, Adrian, zero turnovers. Uh, just another day at the office for him. That's what I, I'm sure Bob Huggins will hope that he sees all year. And Terrence Trailer has called for another personal foul. 21, Terrence Springer called for the first goal. His second, team call number four. This is a very, very deep West Virginia team as well. Here's Ahmad. Ooh. Everything but finish. finish. Yeah. Here's Riley. Williams can't finish. Adrian does have a double-double. There's double the double-double. Playing a little point guard now, too. <laughs> First double-double of his career. Nice feed from Ahmad. And Adrian is fouled by Matlock. Amassing some quick fouls. Five personal fouls in the first minute and 43 seconds here of this second half for Mississippi Valley State. You have to be impressed with the way that Ahmad and both he and Adrian are passing the basketball. I mean, they just have that feel for when guys are going to come open. And not just that, but when to give him a ball at the right Watson time, leading him into a shot. Watson checks back in for trailer for the Delta Devils. Adrian hits the second. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Megan got away with one a minute ago. That could have been a second one. Let's go, Huggy! Oh, uh, mixing uh, things up too. We see the big guys hanging back we see the big guys coming up and different traps that you mentioned you know, sometimes on the ball sometimes not on the ball but talking about the, the player inbounding sure. so different looks and that's hard to prepare for you know first of all West Virginia is going to be very uh, difficult to scout because you don't know from night to night exactly who's going to be out there and again Dax Miles hasn't suited up yet as you mentioned looking for different combinations what is going to work What's going to work best? Riley in the corner, trouble. Ahmad pulls it away. It's kept alive for Philip to Watkins. Brandon Watkins. That might be the cheapest one he gets all year. Yeah, you'll take it. Riley ahead to Romaine. Romaine will finish. Not much question about that. A courageous play by Matlock to step <laughs> in and take that charge from Big Isa Ahmad. 23, Isa Ahmad, his second, team foul number two. Yeah, I think he had pretty good position there. He lowered the shoulder, Ooh. the head, and all. A lot of times, even if there's a moving screen there, or a moving, uh, it could be a call to block, they'll call it a lot of times. Nice finish by Watson. By Watson. Yep. Bob Huggins wants a timeout. 17-20 remaining as Mountaineers up 71 to 32. Start goal scoring wise of his NHL career. It's been fun to watch. Well, that's saying something. My goodness. Yeah. What a tremendous player. Yep, one of the greatest of all time. Oh. Already has a stamp on that, just adding to his legacy now. West Virginia going Watkins out of the game without a really a true center on the floor. Lamont West has checked in. He had three personals, limiting his playing time in the first half. Two on the shot clock. Carter on the way. Good. Boy, we've seen West Virginia yeah, have a couple of moments. Ahmad, I believe it was, who finished things at the end of the first half. End of the shot clock, able to finish. Shot off the mark. West to Carter. Boop. Adrian lost the handle, able to get it back. West, the easy finish. And gets an assist from the floor. Uh -huh. West. 
Batted out of bounds by Carter. Bob Huggins can't believe it. Thought sure Mississippi Valley State touched that ball last. He's going to have a Carter. Carter have a conversation with the uh, official. the That's roll good, and a blocking call and very good call Devon Carter not in good position inside the cylinder as well call is called Javon Carter his first team call number three I will say this for Mississippi Valley State they're outgunned tonight they are without some of their best players we mentioned or certainly three key contributors we mentioned of course Daxter Miles Jr. also not playing for West Virginia but Andre Payne's team has continued to scrap there. They haven't quit. Right. He said that uh, basically said he needed to send a message to a couple of his players, Dante, those players. And uh, he left them at home and he said that really hurt his rotation and he can't do as many things defensively as he uh, would like to do without those guys here. Matt Locke trying to finish the three point play. Nope. Cannot take the rebound. Carter to West. Ooh, missed the jam. And on the other end, Jamal Watson with a finish from I'll, Romaine. I'll show you how to do it. Mm -hmm. Mississippi Valley State now in a matchup zone. West. A nice patient stroke yes, there from was. the baseline. West Virginia harassing and West to steal. And Phillip is going to be called for the charge. Got in a little too deep. Bolden will check in for him, but we'll take a break first with the Mountaineers up 42. I think the good thing about our team is we have guys, by and large, who love playing basketball. And that's that makes it a whole lot more fun. I think it, it, it energizes everybody else. And um, We went through with a group that played for the wrong reasons, and this group plays because they love to play, which is the way it ought to be. And there's Bob Huggins talking about the closeness of the 2016-2017 edition of the WVU Mountaineers. And they are indeed a tightly knit group led by senior Nate Adrian and Javon Carter and other guys who set the tone for this team. Adrian, we told you about him earlier and how he hopes to set the tone with regard to leadership. And how about this? Earlier today, Tavon Myers was telling me that he talked to Jonathan Holton, who's playing Javon overseas. Carter, Paul, they just hadn't talked in a while. So this closeness is something that's been going on for quite a long time with this group. And hopefully it continues in the form of many, many wins, guys. Robbie, thanks. And you see a couple things. First of all, Adrian and others out here at 430 this afternoon in prep. And don't forget, they practice in the morning. They come out. They stay late. Actually, they practice in the afternoon. And then 430 out here shooting some more. So uh, as we see West finishing here. So the dedication to the game. But also, this group really does like each other. Exactly. That's a big part of it. You see them hanging together off of the court. Yep, and that uh, certainly helps. You no, know, if everybody's rooting for each other, and this is a team in which it looks very much. Now we'll see as the season progresses. Looks very much like it's going to be, you know, different heroes night in and night out. And and when you're close and you root for guys having big games, your big games tonight. But you know, you root for the, your your buddy to have a good game tomorrow. That uh, oh, and I'll take another block. That certainly helps. West fouled. What the timing just unbelievable and ball the body ball control. Three, Wiley, second, team ball six. Now, Bob Huggins, believe it or not, will say something about coming down with the arm. You, know, you can pick up a foul that goes straight up. He would have still blocked that shot, but you don't want to see that arm come down. Right. 
no foul call there, but in the long run, you want to go straight up right there without coming down. West hits the first. That's something a lot of again to follow up one more time on what Robbie was talking about. I think a lot of people around the program have talked about that this is a close knit group and that can help. Uh, not only different heroes, different nights, but as you know, uh, if things go sideways as they always do at some point in the sure. season, you lose a couple in a row, what have you, um, that, that ability to hang together. That's exactly right. Boy, the relentless pressure. Searles finds Javon Smith, a freshman yeah. from Milwaukee. Again, when you have, off. you have a guy like Sags back there and, and Macon and, and Watkins, you can go out and really pressure because you have somebody that you know is going to protect the basket for you. Bolden, three-pointer. Missed that one as uh, Kanate and West battled for it and wind up coming to Mississippi Valley State. Here's Searles. Ooh, wow. Watson never really controlled but got enough of it to finish it. Wow. I, I didn't think he was going to be able to even touch that ball. West, three pointer short. Bob Huggins did not like that shot. That was one pass and a shot. That's not exactly what he wants. Boy, and Javon Carter getting in on me. Doing a really nice job there. Stopping Javon Smith. And, oh man, look at that. I hit the corner of the backboard. Let's have some pretty good English on that ball to get that to go down. Wonder if he, wonder if he shoots cool. <laughs> and, it wasn't, and it wasn't like he had a running start either. He had a, he had a jump from uh, flat footed. Well, so. on terrible angle. I yep. mean, hit the side of the board and it still went down. Very you could probably start. try that for a number of other yeah. years and not get it to go. Yep. Well, Smith has come right off the bench and starts firing the freshman. Calling for the matchup zone now. Actually, actually, I think he wants just straight man. Watkins. Brandon Watkins. One thing Watkins did there was good. He, he put it down on the deck one time. You start dribbling a lot inside and you usually get it stolen. Like that. As Carter comes away with it. Canate has it slapped away, and Smith will call a timeout, the final timeout for Mississippi Valley State. I don't think uh, Andre Payne wanted it called there, but it was with 12 16 Time remaining in the second half as Mississippi Valley State is used. That final timeout. It's time to meet your US Cellular feature fan. So we'll take a break. Sag about Kanate Sags. Very noticeable on the court, isn't he? Oh, yes, he is. <laughs> a man among boys here tonight. Good. Eight points, five rebounds, two assists. Two blocks tonight. He had 11 points, six rebounds, a pair of blocks in the opener against Mount St. Mary's. You know, we saw we saw a combination in the first half where West Virginia had two bigs on the floor, Macon and uh, Kanate. Now it's Watkins and Macon. And then just a while ago, we saw West Virginia without a center. Yep, that was going to be a double dribble. And an easy finish yeah. on the other end for Javon Smith, the freshman That's coming Javon in and Smith. scoring some points. Yeah, that, this is three bigs. You have Macon, Watkins, and Bender out there. This is about as tall a lineup as you can put out there. Until they get Logan Rout, the walk-on redshirt freshman back. And Macon. Uh, Bender missed a short one and then Macon missed the rebound. Oh, boy, we saw Macon with an easy shot earlier and we said, I tell you what, he'd like to have that one back. That was right at point blank. Oh, 
Bolden out. Javon, Javon Carter, Carter back in. in. Bowling out because of that lack of ball security again, another one of those cheap turnovers that you can't afford to have. I lost his dribble. Smith will fire another three up. This one no good. Watkins the rebound to the Mountaineers. Man to man defense. This is his zone. This is his zone. Looks like they've gone back to the zone here. Macon. That's the one he dribbled into trouble in the first half here. Pulls it up. They're giving up that shot. Smith can't finish, but cleaned up behind by Amos Given. <laughs> you can hear Andre Payne shout, shouting, make him shoot it. <laughs> Bender, and he will go to the free throw line. Well, it's called at number 32, Amos Given. His second. Andre Payne wants to talk things over with Amos Given. Again, teaching moments, right? Yes, they're, they're, they're pointing towards that swack. That's what they know. Lies ahead for them. They've got to win that conference championship to advance to the NCAA tournament. Bender hits the first. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see him grow too. We've seen it with, you know, Issa Ahmad. We've seen the way Nate has come over the. Now I look for Bender to fall into that in, in that same type of track and, and move up. Kind of a do-it-all guy. Watkins kept it alive for a moment. Now Bender harassing in the corner, and it is going to be off Mississippi Valley State. Another turnover hey, back Adrian to the Mountaineers the as Adrian checks in for Bender. Under 10 minutes remaining. Against his 2-3 zone, pretty good movement from the players. And now Myers, the open three, short. Watkins. Brandon. Well, Macon kept it alive originally. Exactly, Watkins uh, able to clean it up. That's exactly what I was going to say. You know, Macon not going to get credit for that basket, but he kept the ball alive. Romaine checks in for the Delta Devils. Romaine in, had 10 points in 20 minutes. Leading score right now. Oh, and the lob, nice finish from Romaine to Watson again. That's just a little too easy. Bob Huggins is not real you know, fired up about that defensive set. One pass and a dunk. Good look inside by Myers. And the give up to Adrian. Missed it, kicked it back out. Fresh 30. Watkins, baseline, too strong. Air ball. Boy, he wanted that shot for a long time and just had too much juice. And Bugs lost the dribble. Romaine got it back. Ooh, another lob, and this one hit the rim on the way to Watson. Had him there again, though, didn't he? Yes, he did. Myers looking. Adrian, three. No good. Tenders have cooled off a little. Smith, and Adrian will be called for the foul. Foul is called to make Adrian his first. He called six. Yeah, yeah, impressive stuff. It is. Devils, 25. Javon Smith, two shots. There's no you know, question about the athleticism. It's just the, the strength and, and that type of thing. They're hard to bang bodies in the team. Yes, yeah, big. Harler, Galante, and 
biggest player, six nine. That's trainer, and then you Watson at six foot ten, and we've seen him obviously doing some finishing, but then really dropping out. And much more slender, as you pointed out. I mean, just some physically strong players for West Virginia. Right. And Smith hits them both. Well, they were finished, uh, picked to finish seventh in their conference, but you, you throw Javon Smith in there. He's looked very good and uh, a good game as we see Ahmad hit by Dario O'Reilly against Northwestern. And we, you can see some of the flashes here tonight, so uh, maybe Andre Payne's team will surprise a little bit in the swag. Well, and, and three of you are the you know, better players right. are sitting at home. Right. You know, with the right attitude, you get them back, and then that. <laughs> Boy, Kanate followed that all along. I think he might have gotten a piece of that Watson. Yeah. And there's Chase Harler. So he gets into the scoring column. And we get a travel call. So the Mountaineers continue to apply pressure up 93-51. Under eight minutes remaining here in the second half. And don't forget about these guys. New Hampshire, one of the better teams of the America East, picked to finish second in that conference, just behind uh, the uh, league leaders. So they look, they're, they're expected to be, let me say it this way, they're expected to be one of the top teams in that conference. They roll onto the road and beat Temple by five tonight, huh? Go to Philly and beat Temple. That's exactly right. That's a good ball club. Well, if you're a Mountaineer fan, you should be in Morgantown next weekend. Huge football game Saturday night, and then come, come and watch a good uh, basketball game on Sunday. Here's Ahmad, and Ahmad is able to hit. Issa Ahmad. Ten points for Ahmad. <laughs> Around and out for Smith. Kanate and Watson battling, and they're going to call a jump ball. So at Vermont, I was great. Yeah, it is Vermont who is picked to finish first in the America East, by the way. As we take a look at the scoreboard in the Big 12. Yeah, Mount St. Mary's uh, down 15, but it's still early there to them so first half. How about Central Arkansas State hanging in there with Oklahoma State? You know, when Chaka Smart gets a chance to get all of his players in Texas to watch out, yep. they're going to be pretty good. Three-pointer by Vesha Vaughn. Four Mountaineers in double figures. Carter, Adrian, Ahmad, and West have all scored. Ten or more. Still time to add to that. Oh, nice backdoor cut. Great feed from Adrian to Harler. Missed a layup, but a foul call. <laughs> Nate Sam, I want, I want that triple double. We got to make those kind yeah. of layups there. Five assists. Five assists, you know. I don't know how much longer you'll be on the floor, but. Two shots. Nice look, nice pass. Carter hits the first. Carter, by the way, 10 points and eight assists. He is nearing his own double double. For the final 635, Bob Huggins wants to see his team continue to play the right way. Well, you know, I'm just taking a look at Huggs Cross Court right now, and he looks disgusted sitting there. <laughs> yeah. I don't think you will ever going to please him, and if you do please him, I don't know that he'll let, let you know it. <laughs> yeah, Harlan, one of two, rebound to Watson. You get it over the line and the pressure is so many teams drop back and the Mountaineers that they just continue to play very, very tough defense. Six in the shot clock. Ahmad able to bang it out of bounds off Isaac Williams. Tavon Myers. Tavon Myers and Tariq Phillip will check back in for the Mountaineers. Checking in for Mississippi Valley State, Javon Smith. There's Tavon Myers talked about guys playing with more confidence, Ahmad and others. 
Meyer is one of those guys that has looked much more confident out there. You know, it's interesting. Bob Huggins has left Nate Adrian and Carter on the floor quite a bit. I think it's it's the glue. He knows that those guys will get everybody in the position that they need to be in. Do you worry about conditioning at this point? Do you want your guys to play as many minutes as possible just to get them out there? Or is that not really a factor? Oh, nice block by Romain. He's done that twice on jump shots now. Foul behind the play. Romain blocking Myers earlier. Now Carter on this one. Exactly. Getting back to your conditioning thing. Now, the numbers that Bob Huggins is going to play, I don't really think that that factors in right now. Besides, uh, <laughs> he works in pretty hard practice. Well, that's They're true. They're pretty well conditioned. Well, you know, it's supposed to be when you come to the game, it's supposed to be easy. Right. It's not going to be as hard as it was in practice. I mean, some of their morning shoot arounds. Uh, Look like they're tougher than games. Watson misses the front end. Tariq Phillip will slow it back down. Zone defense here for the Delta Devils. Phillip foul as he goes to the basket. Good ball movement. Really good patience there, huh? Sure. Jamal Watson called for the personal. That's his first team call number nine. You want, you know, he, Bob Huggins wants to see shot. the same type of ball movement regardless of who's on the floor. And that's all the way down the line. You know, West Virginia had been 16 of 20, 80 percent before Ryan that Ryan miss. So 16 of 20, net one now. Phillip, a good, solid free throw shooter. It's another thing you're looking, as you mentioned, Especially with the big guys the big. for West Virginia. Boy, Phillip, uh, rare to see him miss two. Neither one of those very close at all. Uh, he's a better free throw shooter. Well, you see Carter at 74% and Phillip at 71% a year ago. Look, not, not unbelievable lockdown free throw shooting percentage, but guys you don't mind seeing at the end of no, the game. At the end of the game, no. At the free throw line. Again, Devin Williams was one of the best guys that West Virginia could have. Day, but it's going to be called for the goaltender. Mm. Goal Looking up, trying to see if he could <laughs> see a replay, I think. Down here's 96 points. Looking to get to the century mark. Oh, tough angles. Canate tried to drop it over the top to Adrian. Oh, no goal time on makes, that one. Up, makes up for it. Adrian going to work into the corner. Carter to the three. You know, if, if, if Sags can, uh, continues to block shots at that record. We're going to have to dig down in the record books and see what the freshman record for, for blocks are. Not held by Warren Baker by any chance, uh, is it? No, they, no, not at all. Javon Smith, the freshman continuing to add points as West Virginia has gone scoreless over their last almost three and a half minutes now. When Logan Rowell getting ready to come into the game. The drought will continue. Being, being able to see his first action at the next dead ball. Yeah, had a stress fracture. Right? Off that stress fracture. Yeah, wasn't yes. sure if he was going to get back this soon, but saw him uh, working out this morning with the team. So Logan Rout talked about the roster being sprinkled with guys from West Virginia. Had another one with Logan Rout. That's right. He was also a six foot. 10 inch quarterback at Cameron High School in West Virginia. I, I, I want to see that. I, yeah, everybody's told me that. I want to see some I want to see some footage. <laughs> we talk about being able to see over the line, right? <laughs> Shouldn't have been an issue. <laughs> Foul by Myers. Well, West Virginia's offense has gone Myers cold. They lead though handily 96 to 59. Three minutes and one second away from improving to 2-0 in the season. Canate putting on another show at the Coliseum.
We talked about Nathan Adrian at the top of the broadcast, 13 points in the opener and continuing his strong play here tonight. Well, I mean, he's just doing a little bit of everything and a whole lot of everything when you really need it. He's, uh, his outside shot looks great. He's distributing the basketball. He's rebounding. I mean, just made himself a totally complete player. 13 points, 12 rebounds, six assists, two steals, no turnovers in 27 minutes for Nathan Adrian. Pretty night, uh, nice night at the uh, at the office. It is. Riley at the line. We've seen Logan Grout check in, by the way, the Cameron High School product. Redshirted a year ago as Riley hits the first of a one and one. <laughs> Seven points now for Riley. Well, he is a quick young player. We've seen a couple of diminutive players. Yes. Well, it says 5'10", and that, that's a stretch. That's in heels. I mean, your Riley doesn't look like. Oh, great finish by Tariq Phillip. I thought Sags was in the game. Yeah, that's, that's exactly what it looked like, isn't it? Tariq Phillips with good ups here and, and actually had to avoid going over the back of the defender. Well, Logan's in the uh, in the stat book. I'm not sure that's the way he wanted to get in there, but picking well, he, up a foul. He looks like he didn't waste that red shirt freshman year. He looks physically stronger than he did a year ago. Sure. Well, if you hang around Andy Kettler, you, I mean, yeah. if you just walk by the weight room, you're going to get stronger. Uh, yep. James Long checks in for the Mountaineers. Carter out, James Long in. Adrian with the rebound. I believe it was uh, Logan Routes and as we take a look at Meyer able to hit and score and now, oh boy, triple digits called now. on the contact. And Meyer again. Meyer. 102 to 61. Hey, hey. Oh, oh, oh. See that quickness. And second personal foul called on Logan Rout. As we take a look at the Mountaineers' upcoming schedule, and again, that New Hampshire game. Might be a little tougher than you think. Yes. New Hampshire going on the road, beating Temple tonight. Then it's Illinois, either Temple or Florida State as part of the NIT, uh, preseason NIT. And that's uh, those games are going to be played down in Brooklyn. And it's Manhattan, another uh, team that you might want to be a little bit leery of as well. Bodies are going to get a little thicker as the, as the Mountaineers uh -huh. continue to go now. Bob Huggins looking on as uh, he's continuing to add to his victory total. So Logan Routes, uh, Ant, the mayor of Cameron, and Bob Huggins was down there, and she said, you got to recruit my nephew. He took a look at him and said, okay. Got him on campus, and here he is. Never know how you're going to unearth a talent, right? Skipped over the top, and the crowd wants long to score a basket. Well, and I think they'd like to see Logan get a touch inside and and there's Adrian now. The good look from Phillip. Stretch pass to Vaughn. As you can see, the Mountaineers, the Mountaineers do not give up up by 50 or whatever it is they 41, are. 40, yeah. Or yeah, but they are still pressuring. Math was never my strong suit. I'm glad you <laughs> Stop play to get the substitutions in. 104 to 63. 19 in the shot clock. 109 in the game clock. And Adrian going out of the ball game. 
it, the one thing about it, teams are going to are, are start looking at him and saying, you know what, we got to hold him down. He's leading a leading score. Of course, Ray Myers is shooting. He might end up leading. But the thing is, Nate is such an unselfish player. He'll find the open guys if they do indeed really go toward him. Ninth West Virginia three as Myers hits there. He was the leading scorer in junior college two years ago at Williston. 25 points per game. And looks more confident. You could see him really maybe being a factor in games sure. for the Mountaineers offensively. Long the extra pass to West. Thought about it. Oh, tough three as shot clock expired and Javon Smith got a piece of that one. And Long will be called for the personal foul. James Long called for the personal, his second. Romain in the line. 107 65. I'm sure the Mountaineers will take a day or two off now. No game until Sunday. Get the legs back a little bit, then jump right in on that New Hampshire. They may be watching some film. I don't know that they will go every day before then. Well, they can't, but uh, they'll take a day or two off and then really get ramped up for the New Hampshire ball game on Sunday. It will be an interesting game as Romaine you know? hits one of two. Philip will just allow the clock to expire. The Mountaineers will come away with an easy 107 66 victory to improve. Warren to 2 0 on the season. Yep, relatively easy. Really, no, uh, no drama at all from, uh, from the start. And Bob Huggins picks up another victory here at his alma mater. His team moving up one spot in the rankings this week from 20 to 19. They improved to 2 0 on the season. And Bob Huggins heading over to talk to Robbie and Spikowski following this 41 point victory. And let's head to Robbie and Coach Huggins now. Yep. Well, Bob. You weren't happy with the way your team played on opening night. What improved specifically with regard to the lack of turnovers tonight from start to finish? I thought we were really good the first half. We were about like we were the first game, the second half. You can't give up. We gave up 10 layups. That's almost impossible to do. I mean, we just, we quit playing. And then we're going to have, I think we're going to have to play 40 minutes from here on out. I think, I mean, 20 minutes. Who cares? I mean, we, and that's all I talked to about him in the second half was can we work on our stuff, work on getting better? We didn't get better. So what do you gain from experiences like this when you see a game that you weren't satisfied with and only one half that you were satisfied with? Provocative end of the game interviews with you is about the only thing I can think of. That's the first thing that pops in my head. Really? Yeah. So how would you evaluate my interview tonight versus my interview on Friday? What's that? How are my interviews tonight versus Friday? Better? Did I improve? I thought it was very provocative tonight. I mean, you put a lot of thought into those questions. <laughs> how about Nate Adrian? What kind of, uh, I don't want to say leader, but he's a senior. He's a veteran guy and having a good night tonight. What do you like about what you've seen from him, Bob? I don't know where we'd be without him. Well, he gets 14 rebounds, we run all the offense through him because he, he's about the only guy who makes good decisions with the ball. and. Uh, He's the key to what we do pressure wise. He's been terrific. Anything else, Bob? I'm done. I'm out of questions. I'm out of answers. Thanks, Bob. Let's bring in Nate Adrian right now. <laughs> Bob Huggins just said, Nate, that he doesn't know where this team would be without you. What does it mean to you to hear something like that? Oh, that means a lot coming from Coach Huggs. Obviously, he's a Hall of Fame coach, and for him to think that it may feel good. How about 15 and 14 from you tonight? What fuel your, uh, fueled your first double-double in your career? I'm uh, just trying to play hard, trying to get opposite like he needs us to, to get boards, make up for people we lost from last year. How about uh, the fact that uh, Bob said he loved the way you played in the first half. He didn't like the way you played in the second half. He gave up 10 laps. He said that's almost impossible to do. What can you take from a game like tonight? Uh, we got to take the good and the bad. We got to go back and look at the second half and learn from that because the reality is if you don't play a full 40 minutes, you're not going to win important games. And I mean, these are good games to play, but we need to win the big games. Now, 
Nate, you said to me before the game that you're coming here early, your focus and your concentration are the two things that you've been working on. Why do you think you've seen results in the first two games from that? Uh, it's just a ripple down effect. If you give time to the game, then it's going to work out for you. So just trying to do my best from last year, and it's working well so far. Congratulations, Nathan. Thank you, appreciate it. All right, Rob. Robbie, thanks very much. And to underscore what Bob Huggins said, yep, 15 points, 14 rebounds, six assists, zero turnovers for Nathan Adrian. Impressive game for him, and big 2-0 for the Mountaineers. All around great game. And again, the glue and the leader of the ball club. The Mountaineers improved to 2-0 in the season. Final score was 107-66 to for Warren Baker, Robbie, and Spikowski, our entire Root Sports crew. I'm Rob King. Thanks for watching West Virginia Basketball on Root Sports.